Now we learned a lot. We learned about our loss function. We learned how to decode, given a speech, how do you output transcription? We learned about new loss. We learned about our data. So now we are in a comfortable position to move forward with uh, another architecture for speech recognition. For speech, there is a melee spectrogram. This we covered in the first slide. And then uh, given the melee spectrogram, you want to output some text. So X is your speech. Y is the corresponding label, just to set the stage in terms of notation. And then your data set are pairs of speech and label. Speech, label, speech, label. That's your training data set. XI, this XI here, is a time series. Is actually this speech spectrogram. And they're going to have different lengths, T, TI. So for each XI, you have the corresponding TI. And let's take a look at one element of that sequence. So let's take a look at one of these guys. Let's say this guy. That's going to be a vector of audio features. And what do they mean? If it's a vector, if you look at this element here, the pith element, that's the power of the pith frequency. This axis here is time. The other axis is frequency. And these colors are the power or the energy in that particular bin. And then you're going to output, your model is going to output the probability of CT. These are the outputs of your model. There's a hat on it. And then CT could be uh, characters, A, B, up until Z. It could be a space. It could be apostrophe, or it could be a blank. So the space is a different thing from the blank. Blank is just you're outputting nothing. That's for your speech. For instance, for this guy, there is nothing that you're outputting. Or you could output a space because these are your words. Space is part of your characters. H are your hidden, hidden layer one, hidden layer two, up until the last hidden layer. And then your H0 is your input. What is the first layer doing for deep speech? It's based on a convolution. And a convolution, you take XT and a context around it. For instance, maybe two time steps before and two time steps after. That's your context. One way to implement convolutions is just to turn this context, so the entire window here, into a long vector and multiply it by a matrix. So it's then going to be a fully connected neural network or a fully connected layer. So you can think of everything here as fully connected. The first layer is taking into account the neighborhood. The next one, you can think of them as one by one convolutions or fully connected ones. So it's just a linear combination of your previous hidden state plus a bias, pushing it through ReLU, but this is modified ReLU. Up until this point, this is ReLU, but then you're capping your ReLU at maybe 20. So that number doesn't really, doesn't really matter. So you're capping it at some point so that you can control the values of your age. They don't get too big. So these are not recurrent. Up until this point, there is no recurrence. There is a bunch of convolutions and then fully connected or actually one by one convolutions. The next guy here is going to be recurrent. So you have a forward recurrence, you have a backward recurrence, and then you're going to add the two. And then the last guy is, uh, again, one by one convolution. So it's a combination of convolutions and recurrence, this architecture. And in the end, you're going to output the probability of the next symbol being K. And K could be any of these letters or the blank. And then we know that we need to write down a loss. You can use the CTC loss. You can train it, and then you can decode it with beam search. We just covered it. Okay? The only thing that you change is the architecture. And if you want to expand your beam search, the one that I just explained before, you are multiplying the probability of your language model by the probabilities coming out of your CTC. If you take the log, that multiplication is just going to turn into summation. So it's the log of the CTC plus the log of the language model. And there is also another catch here. You can uh, penalize the length of the outputted sequence in terms of word count so that they don't get too big. In terms of data set, you can have Wall Street Journal, which is somebody is reading from text. You can have Switchboard, which is conversational. You can have Fisher. These data sets I want you to explore. And you can have Baidu. I don't think this data set is available, but these are, so the size of the data is getting bigger and bigger. This is 5,000 hours of speech and these many 
speakers. Without the language model for the decoding, what are you going to get? You're going to say, what is the weather like in Boston right now? Prime Minister Nerener Modi, Arthur, and uh, ticket for the game. But then as you add the language model, the Boston here is going to get fixed to be Boston. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, that one is going to get fixed because probably Narendra is a word in your vocabulary. And this is going to get fixed as well. Are there any tickets for the game? So that's the effect of your language model. In terms of numbers, that was qualitatively. Quantitatively speaking, you can compare it to some classical methods like Gaussian mixture models and hidden Markov models and some CNNs, CNNs in addition to hidden Markov models. And then you can have deep speech trained on switchboard, trained on this data set and trained jointly on switchboard and Fisher. And then you're reporting the results in terms of word error rate. So the lower is better on these for on these data sets. CH is a complex data set. It has noise in it. So this framework is doing the best when your speech is noisy. For instance, there is noise in the background. Somebody is talking, there are trains going around, there is noise. But without noise, this model apparently is doing the best. But in total, if you put these two together, deep speech is the best. Okay? And we are going to cover another paper, deep speech 2, which is going to improve upon this. We're going to see that later on. So there are these systems for speech recognition. You can actually go online and play around with them, like Apple Dictation, Bing Speech, Google API, Wit.ai. On the clean and noisy, on the clean, you're getting some improvement out of deep speech. So this is just testing those systems against each other on some clean data set and on some noisy data set. And on noisy data set, you are getting a huge improvement. Okay, any questions? Most of the hard part we covered in the previous topics. So the easy ones was working with different architecture. Any questions? Okay, perfect.